thank you so much. I am Kristen Wanig, as um, you mentioned, and I am a product manager at Microsoft, and I work on the Azure Developer Tools team. Our mission on the Dev Tools team is to make it easy for any developer working in any programming language to be successful when they're building on Azure. So today I'm gonna to share with you how we made, gonna to have to get used to these double monitors. Okay, so today I'm gonna to share with you how we made it easy to approach AI applications and deploy them to the cloud in a developer workflow um, using the Azure Developer CLI. So the Azure Developer CLI, we call AZD, is built for developers. And we built it with developer-friendly commands so that you can build and provision the resources you need and manage an application in production on Azure. So AZD commands map to the key stages of a developer workflow. And they keep the focus on writing application code, or in this case, LLM, working on the models, working on generative AI, and stay far away from being an expert in the cloud. So there's no need to understand everything in cloud computing. So these commands were designed to feel really familiar to developers. So you'll see a lot of action commands like AZD init, which initializes your project, and uh, AZD up, which packages up your code, provisions all the resources that you need, and deploys your application to the cloud. And then you'll also see AZD pipeline config, which is important for what we've been talking about all day, is these iterations that you're making on your applications and your models. So being able to set up a developer uh, deployment pipeline. So these commands all keep us in the developer workflow instead of having to interact with specific resources on Azure, like you would find in the Azure CLI, which is different than the Azure developer CLI. So the Azure CLI is more specific to working with the resources on Azure and it's built for uh, cloud operations and infrastructure administration. So the simplicity of these commands give developers a really straightforward approach and it makes it a lot faster for being able to iterate on things like our LLMs, generative I, uh, uh, AI, and then fine tuning the user experience over and over again. Uh, so building AZD was just the first part about going from concept to cloud faster. And I'm going to share more about how this works and why we did that, and then how we're shipping features for bringing more AI development practices closer to developers in that workflow in the command uh, in the CLI. Okay, so first let's break down how does AZD work. The AZD CLI depends on these templated applications. And there's really two ways that you can get started with this. So you can pick a template and you can uh, go from one in the collection based on your app stack, or you can have AZD infer from your code base in your repo. And either way that a developer takes, either approach will get you an AZD, um, sorry about this, double monitor situation. Um, either approach will get you what it takes to um, to deploy to the cloud with AZD. So you can see our template library here and an example of one of what you would see if you select like the chat GPT with RAG and Azure OpenAI. So let's take a look about how this all comes together. These templates, when you go through the gallery and you pick one, they're all end-to-end -end solutions. They're all fully working code solutions. So you'll have a source file that has real application code. And in addition to this, you'll also have in Azure YAML, and this specifies the AZD project path. It specifies, it specifies the um, metadata that would let your project and Azure know exactly um, what programming language you're using, the component or service in your app, and help you to get set up with AZD. And then the most important is the infrastructure folder. So this contains all the infrastructure as code that you would need to run an application on Azure. The infrastructure as code files are how they know, how Azure knows exactly what to provision. So when AZD is giving instructions back to Azure, it is looking at these bicep files in your code and basically figuring out what you need so that you don't have to figure it out because you're in the developer workflow, not in the business of being the cloud expert. So these 
files specifically talk about what you need to create. It helps you to create their configuration and then how they all interact together. OK, so then you'll find other things that will be really helpful on that continued deployment, which is the um, GitHub folder for setting up your CI CD workflow. And then you have other files that are really helpful for setting up your local code and your Visual Studio and your code spaces. So you can have all those configurations. OK, so putting this all together, remember I said all these applications cover end to end scenarios that give you a hello world. They provision all of the infrastructure that you need to deploy your code, and they support the iterative development practice of deploying frequently with your CI CD pipeline and iterating on your application. So, taking all of this, it really is as simple as taking your uh, application template from the gallery after you have figured out which app stack you need on that uh, template. And then at any point in your development process, you can initialize your project with that template. Once you've done that, then you can take that template and take out the app code and put your own app code in there. And then customize the CI CD pipeline. So you are ready to go. So we made this whole approach to deploying to Azure in a developer workflow so that you could get to Azure within minutes and not have to go and read all the documentation and become an expert on cloud computing. Um, because we're already trying to be experts on all the LLMs, RAG models, everything else. So we, we really want to make it easy for you. OK, so one of the very coolest things about AZD and how it works is that we have a really cool community around the templates. We have Microsoft authored and maintained templates that we have in the gallery. You can trust these because we put them the security at the top. We also run regular tests on them, and we work to fix them. And if they're not working well, take them out of the gallery. So we have that. But then we also have community authored templates. And that's really cool because that means that, one, you can put your code, um, you can discover more tools, first of all. And second, you can um, collaborate and put your tools into applications that developers would deploy, um, like we're doing with a lot of uh, the folks here, Llama Index, Phoenix, um, from Arise, et cetera. So this is, makes it really special. OK, so let's look at a new community author template. This is Phoenix on Arise, and Phoenix has been talked about a lot today. So you might already be familiar with it firsthand, or at least from hearing about it today at um, many of the talks. Um, we the the benefit of making this AZD compatible is that any developer who wants to run the Phoenix platform on Azure can be up and running in literally just a few minutes. So let's take a look and see it in action. In this demo, my teammate Grace, she goes to the gallery, she selects the Phoenix template, and then she goes to GitHub for the code. Um, once she's there, she spins up code spaces in the browser, and after the project is initialized, she's ready to do AZD up to the cloud. So I'm going to zoom in and show you what we're looking at here. Here you can see that Grace ran AZD up at the top line. And then she prompted, she was prompted by CLI, um, by AZD to um, enter her environment, uh, select an Azure subscription, and select a region, and then set up her resource group. Once she did all that, AZD is ready to start deploying. So it will start provisioning all the resources, getting them ready, and we'll see that in action here. So as you can see, these are all the steps that we just went over in the zoomed in version. And I did that because it does look like it's really tiny, even on the big, big, big screen. Um, but these are like what will happen when you run AZD up. And then at the end, you'll get an endpoint, and you can see the Phoenix UI, and you are up and running. In the output of the terminal, you will see that there is an endpoint to see your dashboard, but there's also instructions on how to configure this to your application. And if you look really closely on the zoomed in version of the final result, it took one minute and 34 seconds to deploy this app, which is really fast. Um, so getting a template up and running, and once it's going, it is a really fast process for developers. And it's in the developer workflow because developers were familiar with let's deploy, let's do something, not going in and doing the fine grain of the, the resources on Azure. OK, so our AI uh, templates have been really popular. 
at the very top of the most used templates. So earlier this year, we wanted to make it even easier for developers. And we wanted to bring in more AI studio and machine learning studio capabilities closer to um, AZD in the command line, which also makes it available to your favorite uh, dev tools. So you can see here, this is um, an example of what that might look like. Um, this, you might already be familiar from what we were looking at before with the project structure, but this is the Azure YAML where you can see how you might set this up. Um, and under the services, you'll see host AI endpoints. So this allows you to deploy um, to Azure uh, Studio, AI Studio and working with the LLMs there. So we, let me go to the next one. So you'll see that um, the AI uh, Studio Starter, this is another template, and this is just slightly different than what I was talking about with the fully working code. The Studio Starters or the Bicep Starters, we have just a few templates like this where they don't have app code. They really are just a starter for you um, to put all of your app code in. Um, and here you can see in the Azure YAML that you can uncomment the code and configure uh, the, the services for your application. Okay, so that in the Azure AI Studio, in case you're not familiar, this is where you can look and uh, work with all the models. And there's um, over a thousand models. And this is your home for getting set up. And we wanted to bring this more closely into the dev workflow. So like the Azure portal or like the Azure CLI being more uh, operational, we wanted this to be more in the developer in the, um, in, at, right at the command line. Okay, so you can see here that we now have an AI YAML. And in the AI YAML, now you can see that you can configure these models and you can deploy them. And what's really cool about this is when you go to the application code um, from the templates, you can build a template configured to the model and configured to the way that you want to maybe ship a product. And this makes it that much easier for developers to get up and running and get started um, with their AI models in their application. Okay, to get started with one of our starter templates, all you really have to do for any template is to go to GitHub and their source code is there. You can open it in code spaces. You can do anything that you would normally do in GitHub, go local, um, but you can also go to AZD and just run the command. You can either just write AZD init, and then when you give it the argument for T, it will bring back that template that you have specified there. Um, we also have, um, other commands that I'll share at the end where you can get a list of templates that are specific to AI. Okay, so let's recap. We talked about how we make it easier on the DevTools team to go from code to cloud, how we go from idea and concept to it working in the real world. And then um, because of our community model, we also talked about how we bring forward tools that you can discover. And anyone here, you can also work with us to contribute to the community and put your tools in front of developers that would want to get working quickly in the developer uh, workflow. And then third, with the popularity of AI uh, over the last year, we also talked about how we brought that closer to the developer workflow in the command line um, with AZD. So if you have any questions at all, um, I brought the whole team with me. So we've got Pamela, we've got Ovi, we've got uh, Rajesh, um, myself and ready to answer any questions and it really wouldn't be um, like I want to also give you a credit too so this is from the founders hub and you can use this towards any credit on using access to the open AI thank you round of applause thank you any questions Again, we got the team here as well, so if there's still over questions, we've got time. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Um, when you do AC app, um, and everybody have resources already deployed, but it's much better at some point, I realize I need some support that was not deployed at the very beginning. Will it detect like the, the, you know, the changes uh, that need to be deployed, or will that uh, allow you so yes, and like I said, with the um, with uh, the AI function features that we added, we've seen that people want to do this, and so we're actually working on the next iteration of that. 
and we open up our customer studies to anyone who wants to join. So um, it's a yes and. So yes, we have that partially and we're adding to it and being able to swap in and out things like a database or add different resources to your project.